Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to cold waters uh, to once again attempt to stop the Soviet juggernaut and win, for once, a campaign as the allies in, well, allies, the Western uh, democracies in a hypothetical world war against the Soviet Union. We are once again playing the 1984 campaign because wire guided torpedoes and uh, modern technology is so much more fun than 1960s unguided torpedoes and torpedoes that your enemy can simply turn around and outrun because they're so slow. In this video, we're going to be naming our new commander Marco Ramius because if we can't get things done ourselves as a good old fashioned American skipper, maybe a Soviet defector can help us beat the Soviet menace. Let's go ahead and get started. My intent today is to start off uh, returning to that ever so elegant skipjack class. The first of the teardrop hold subs with that rounded nose, uh, as well as one of the earlier U.S. nuclear subs built in the 50s. Not the first by any means, but certainly one of the earlier U.S. subs. There were only seven of these built. Uh, it was believed, I, I think, that they were largely used for special operations missions. Um, she's a small boat in comparison to the L.A. She's only 3,500 tons. Compare that to the Permit, for example, over 800 tons larger. Sturgeon, yet larger yet. Narwhal, larger yet. And Los Angeles, nearly double the Skipjack's size. So she's the little engine that could. Now, that does mean there are no missiles on board. She just carries Mark 48 torpedoes and Moss decoys. But I'm okay with that, because thus far, any time I've fired a harpoon, I have instantly died. As the enemy has snapshot a rocket, a propelled torpedo to the exact location, dropped down on me, and killed me. So my hope is that all I really need is the Mark 48, and then I've got the Moss decoy to uh, make the enemy think my submarine is somewhere else. The Skipjack also has the advantage of being a 30-knot boat, though I believe she's the second fastest sub in this game, only behind the Los Angeles class, so that's nice. If we resort to our tactics of last night, we can rocket ship up and down and up and down and up and down. <laughs> Uh, to uh, bob and weave around enemy torpedoes, although I'm going to try and focus on a subtler technique and uh, maybe trust myself and, and just be quiet that the enemy won't uh, successfully home in on me. We'll see. Um, uh, the skipjacks, as I said, were built in the 1950s. Uh, these are very much, you know, old boats by the time the war is going to occur, over 24-ish years old. Um, so these boats are all nearing the end of their useful lifespan. Uh, a couple of boats were decommissioned in the late 80s, other ones were decommissioned in the early 90s. So these are all in their last uh, last legs as subs go, but we'll see if they, uh, they still have what it takes to fight a modern Soviet force. The last time we played with a skipjack, we died literally instantly. We spawned into a zone, and already an enemy rocket-propelled torpedo was on its way to kill us. Hopefully we will have better luck this time. We'll go ahead and accept that. And you can see here, effective immediately, you are hereby assigned to command of Skipjack Class Submarine, USS Sculpin, SSN 590. Congratulations and good luck in your new command. Okay. Alright, so we get the whole Ronnie goes to war bit here with all these headlines talking about the Soviet Union being paranoid and the... Um, West provoking the Soviets, the Soviets shooting down a Western airliner, and eventually war. Um, I need to read through all of that every single one of the streams and videos. Okay. So, war is declared. Alright, it is November 29th, 1984. Intelligence estimates that enemy Spetsnaz commandos will land from a submarine in the vicinity of Andoya within the next week. You're ordered to intercept them uh, and eliminate them before they land. So this was actually our last mission that we died on last night was an intercept mission on a Spetsnaz formation. It was actually our own torpedo which sunk us, so hopefully we'll avoid anything along that line. Secondary objectives are locate and sink any escorting submarines if possible and avoid detection by enemy anti-submarine warfare patrols. Okay. Um, so it's landing near, what is it again? Andoya. And you can see here our boat has six torpedo tubes, so a lot more torpedo tubes to play with. Um, gonna put two mosses in the tube right away. Uh, so we'll have four Mark 48s and two mosses in our torpedo tubes. 
Um, I'm assuming that means you can have three torpedo tubes on each side of the ship. Fire. I always get this in the force in the force schematic. Two door. You can if one door opens, it kind of cuts the wire on the other door. So you can have. So you could probably have three operational wires at once. Is my assumption. Um, so that means a total of only two mosses. I don't want to. I don't want to take time away, but. I do want more than two mosses. Okay, so we've got 20 torpedoes and four mosses. We spent one hour in port. Let's go ahead and cast off. So where the hell is Andoya? Oh, it's way up in the north of uh, Norway. All right, well, hopefully our boat can get there in time as we race directly for Andoya. Askel, I think they just automatically reload the, the noisemakers. I, I was... Spending a bunch of time yesterday trying to figure that out, and it seems to me that I never ran out of them. Even though it said I only had 12, I'm pretty sure I dropped more than 12, so um, I think they're just there and reload automatically. Okay. Oh. So we picked up an enemy submarine. Go ahead and close to 20 kilometers. Now... Okay, so maybe this is what I was doing wrong the other day, is I wasn't hitting the close to button, so we always, literally always, ended up like right under fire before we even entered the game, which was frustrating to say the least. So maybe that was my issue, because this time I clicked close to, and my uh, my ship was already already there. Now let's go ahead and see if we can get a fix on the enemy boat. We'll slow to one third. Oh shit, I didn't want to do that. Sure hope. They don't know exactly where I am after one ping of active sonar. Oh, shit. Well, I got my hotkeys all screwed up. Blowing emergency ballast. Full rise on the planes. Oh, uh, that was dumb. Well, this is a good start. So where's this contact? Well, if they didn't have a good fix on me already, we just used active sonar and we blew our ballast and we're skyrocketing to the surface, so... Anyway... Um... What was rig for silent running? Can anybody remember, remind me what that is? Shift D is noisemakers. Shift R is ballast apparently and shift a is uh, active sonar but what is what is rig for silent running again shift s okay well thanks for that We are, we are just sailing upwards. All right, let's, while we're doing that, let's try and identify the contact that we have. I'm going to guess it'll be like a whiskey. That's what it was last time that was carrying the enemy uh, force in. There is a pretty close match, but. Yeah, it's a whiskey. Okay, so we know she's a whiskey. She's only five kilometers away. Is there a layer here at all? So we're actually above the layer now, or about to be. But it's like right at the surface. I'm just hoping there's no enemy surface vessels in sight, because if there aren't, then it may not matter that we're on the surface. All right, so we've got a, a we've got a equi uh, equilibriate, equilibrate, or uh, oh. 
What the fuck? is only five kilometers out. I don't know if we can shoot at him from here, but I kind of want to. I just don't know if the wire will break. I'm only going to fire one torpedo. Hopefully that's enough. The whiskey is an older boat. Oh shit. There is an enemy bomber. I don't know how close they are. We probably should submerge, huh? And we're cavitating. Still equilibrizing the tanks. Now, cavitating might not be as big of an issue, given we are above the water, or above the... Still only the one fish. I'm having the, uh... The torpedo close a bit before it actually goes active. I'm gonna activate it here in a moment. Then I'm gonna swing away from the enemy, although he's turning away, so... He may have already detected it. Alright. We'll see if the if our torpedo finds him. We're still on the surface. A sonar buoy? No, oh, that's a torpedo, isn't it? Yeah, we're dead. Can we please? Dive just a little bit. Reactor damaged, so we have no propulsion. Let's try and dive with ballast. Maybe that'll help. Alright, so the enemy sub is sunk. That's good. Trying to get below the layer before the enemy drops another torpedo on us. You know, there wasn't another sub last night, so you're right, there very, way mel very may well be another sub. But I wouldn't take it as a given, for sure. Is another torpedo in the water. No. Abandoned ship! Okay, so we were sunk. We sunk the only enemy sub. Uh, safely recovered due to rescue efforts. So we didn't die! I mean, our sub sunk, but we accomplished the mission. And the campaign isn't over yet. 
All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off here. I know that was kind of a short video. This was taken from a live stream just the other night, uh, but the next piece of it's going to be a bit longer, and I didn't want it to be like an hour and a half long, so I'm going to jump in here, cut it off at this natural stopping point. This was obviously a calamity of errors in on my part uh, driving this sub, but fortunately we achieved the objective and were able to rescue the crew, which is, this game is crazy about how easy it is to rescue a crew. 150 feet down and your sub's destroyed and everyone's fine? Yeah, right. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I know this was a bit of a shorty. Look for a, a longer one tomorrow that will continue the campaign where we left off. Thanks again for tuning in, and uh, have a great one, guys. Bye.